So what I want to do right now is I want to take you through something that is extremely important, and that is your end of season analysis if you're an offensive coordinator. If you get done with your season and don't look back, it's going to make it very difficult to make improvement going forward. I think this is probably one of the most important things you do. I'll say it's vital. Um, I want to sit down and go through every aspect of our offense to be able to find ways to improve. And I'm going to take you through 10 things. There's really 10, th you know, we're going to look at some more things and, but there's 10 that I think are really important. And it didn't matter if we averaged 500 yards a game or 300 yards a game. These 10 areas are going to be looked at in detail because our goal is to continue to improve and be better than we've ever been every single year, regardless of the talent that we might have. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is our self-scout. So we self-scout each week during the season. I'm going to look at tendencies because I know defensive coordinators are looking at that. Uh, they're, they're analyzing us, trying to figure out what defense to call in certain field zones and certain situations and when certain personnel groups are on the field. Uh, so during the season, we're, we're self-scouting to try to figure out where we can attack what they're going to do to us. But after the season, I'm going to have a massive self-scout self report, and I'm going to run it for the whole season. Then I'm going to run one for the playoffs. Then I'm going to run one just for district and then for non-district. And I want to compare those. I'm going to take some time to look at those. I'm going to look at personnel groupings and formations. What do we call in certain personnel groups? Where do we have some tendencies there? Uh, I'm going to look at down and distance, field zone, and then game and time situations. And I'm also going to analyze, and this is something I do during the season, but I'm going to analyze what concepts we had that were most successful and least successful. And then I'm going to break this down a little further. I'm going to look at who got the ball because I want to know where we get in our dudes touches Were the guys that we thought dudes that were going to average, you know, five yards of carry, were they averaging what we thought they'd average based on the concepts we we're calling. So I'm going to kind of analyze each of those areas. Then I'm going to make the second thing I'm going to do is make cut up lists. And these help us evaluate our season. I'm going to make a cut up list for each concept, each run concept, each pass concept, each protection that we have then i'm going to make a formation list and then a field zone list down and distance trick plays and then i want to get all of our sacks and tackles for loss on one playlist that way i can go through and look for common themes see that's why i want to break these playlists down because then i can go through and watch and see are we seeing the same consistent issues or are we seeing the same positive things over and over where did the breakdowns occur and was it something where we needed a different play call? Was it something where our quarterback maybe missed a check? Did we slide the wrong way? What issues did we face? I'm going to look at takeaways. Where did we turn the ball over? All right. I want to see all of our fumbles and all of our interceptions. Then I'm going to look at all of our uh, positive plays. Now, when I say a positive play, I'm not talking about a gain of one. I'm going to look at all of our first down plays. I'm going to make a list of first down where we gained four or more because that's a win on first down. And then I'm going to go through second down, and I'm going to start with second and short. What did we do on second and short? All right, I want to cut up of that. And then I want a cut up of second medium, and I want to see if we cut the distance in half. And then I'm going to pull our second longs. Did we cut that distance in half? Because our goal on second down is either to get a first down or at least to get a win, we take a second and eight, make it third and four. Second and 10, make it third and five. Second and 15, we make it third and eight. You know, do we cut those distances in half? And then I'm going to look at our explosives. So now I want to see all of our explosive plays, runs of 12 or more, passes of 16 or more. And then I want to look at all of our momentum plays. Those are plays of 25 yards or more. And then I'm going to look at all of our touchdown plays. All right. And I want to see all of the, I want to have cut up lists for all of these. So we can go down and if we say, all right, today we're going to watch power. We can watch all of our power concepts. We can watch our power to the right, power to the left. Sometimes we find out that certain concepts were better to one side or the other or to the field or to the boundary. So I want to be able to go through and have those on the ready as we prepare and analyze our previous season. Because when I talk about analysis of the previous year, it's preparation for the next year. We're going to then 
watch every play. So I make those cut up lists the day after the last game. So I go through and do the self scout report and I make all those cut up lists myself. I'm going to have all of those ready when the coaches come back in Monday. And then what I want to do is get the staff together to go through game by game and watch every play. Some seasons we will be able to do logistically do this easier than others. Cause you, you know, if you're at the high school level, you have guys coaching second sports. So we're going to come in before school. We're going to pick a couple days a week. We're going to come in before school. We're going to try to do a game a day. We're not watching each play 25 times. Uh, I'd like us to watch it once or maybe a few plays we're going to watch twice. We all know how this goes. The struggle is real. You're going to go back and forth. So you're going to take a little more time. When I was at the college level, we could spend a lot of time on each play because we had a lot more time during the day. No one had to go teach classes or coach another sport. Or if we did teach classes, uh, you know, we had a limited load. We weren't teaching five in a day. Uh, but what this does, is it helps us helps us to really analyze our offense, our play calling, and our strengths and weaknesses throughout the season. It allows us as a, as a staff also to talk about what defenses did. Sometimes when the in the heat of battle, you don't see things the same way. So we're going to sit and now we can say, oh, look, we, we missed that during the game. We didn't see that they did this. We didn't see that they made this adjustment. And now we're able to take some notes of that and hey, here's one of their adjustments. If it worked, we're probably going to see it as a base, not an adjustment the next year. And then we can find holes in our scheme and our teaching. You know, I think that's really important. As a play caller, we're analyzing the play calls. Was it a good call? Was it a bad call? What made it good? What made it bad? Next aspect of this, and it really some of this happens simultaneously, but we're going to take some notes, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I want to write everything down. All right. What did we do well? What did we not do well? And what was really, really bad? And I'm doing some of this on my own. Um, but a lot of this is happening while we're watching film together. But I'm going to make sure that I'm going to share. So the next thing kind of is within this, I'm going to share these notes with the staff. We're going to have a Google Drive, a Google Doc that's going to go through each of these notes um, by concept and by position. So we're going to have them categorized. I'm going to next make notes independently. They're going to make notes independently. And we're going to talk about these things together. Next is personnel evaluations. Okay. Who did we lose? Who's graduating? Who's, who's not with us anymore? Who's coming back? What are the strengths and weaknesses of each player? And I ask the position coaches to rate their guys. All right. Rank them. Rank them top to bottom. All right. Do we need to make position changes? Are there people that we have to move around to fit who comes back and fill holes? All right. And then we're going to build our first depth chart. I think it's important that very early on you build your first depth chart. And we're doing this as soon as the season ends that next week out. So by the time we get to mid-January, all of these things are done. But the depth chart is usually done that first week you're back after the holiday break. Next is going to be staff evaluations, all right? Our staff evaluations are going to, to happen very quickly. I'm going to have a questionnaire. The Monday after that last game, I'm going to send it to the, to the offensive staff members and have them fill it out. Some of it is self-evaluation, and some of it is where they're evaluating our offense as a whole, and then some of those questions evaluate me as a leader of our offense. And then we're going to meet and talk honestly. And it's, and it's got to be an honest talk. You can't have any egos or let it get personal about areas we need to improve. How can we grow? What do we have to do? I'm also, and I think you need to do this, you need to talk to your guys about their goals. All right? You need to help them achieve their, their goals. So what can I do to help you achieve this goal you have? And, and again, honesty is vital to this. Next, we're going to evaluate practice. What do we need to do to adjust our practice schedules? What changes do we need to make? We're going to talk about what we did well. What holes do we have to fill? What do we need more of? What do we need less of? All right. Based on all the things that we saw on film, what do we need to do more of? And I'll give you an example. So we noticed during our inside zone uh, analysis and watching each of our plays, we struggled 
on our inside zone play one season with our combination block and our running back being able to read the combination block. What did we need to do? Well, we didn't do our V drill very much during the season. So we decided that the V drill had to become a twice a week, five minute period minimum. And that would help us with that. So those are things that we're looking at tying it all together. Then we're going to go through our game planning evaluation. We're going to look at what we need to adjust with our systems and processes on, on the weekend. What do we need to do with how we prepare our game and practice scripts? Do we need to change roles and responsibilities because each coach has a role with our game planning? Do we need to make adjustments? And then the big question with all of this is, did we prepare to put our kids in the best position possible to be successful? And if we didn't, or even if we did, how do we do it even better the next year? Then we're going to evaluate in-game uh, communication. I think you have to do this. A lot of teams, a lot of coaches don't have a process for communication during a game. We do. All right. I have a coach tube video. If you ever want to go check that out, every coach that watched that said it's better than any scheme video uh, as far as benefit for their program. We have a process for how we communicate between plays. We have a process for how we communicate between possessions, during timeouts, at halftime, post-game, pre-game. We have a system of communication. Otherwise, you have chaos on the headsets. So everything we do is very process-based, and we're going to look at these processes and see if we need to make adjustments and find ways to improve. In summary, you need to evaluate every aspect of your offense. You need to invest time to do this. It is worth the time to perform each of these tasks. And it does take time. This, this process is not a, a three-minute thing. It's, it's going to take you several days, several weeks to go through. When you do this, you have to leave your egos at the door because it's about improvement. It's about getting better. It's not about being comfortable. All right? We're going to look at everything from the outside in. We're going to look at it as if someone sent us this film to look at and evaluate. All right. So you've got to be willing to take some criticism and self-criticize. You've got to be able to look and say, I didn't do this very well. I will get better. Here's how I'm going to do it. So you have to, you have to let your ego go and then be honest to have some difficult conversations. And remember, it's about getting better. I do have some videos on CoachTube, and then I've got a blog at CoachVent at blogspot.com. And, of course, on Twitter at CoachVent, we talk a lot of football on there. So if there's ever anything I can do, please let me know. I hope this will help you as you prepare for your next season. Um, also, we'll be at some Glacier Clinics this year, Orlando, Minneapolis, and, um, and Atlantic City. So I hope to see a bunch of you there and be able to talk some more football. See if we can figure out how to stop this thing. And and um, and again, if there's anything that I can do, anything you need, please let me know. I wish you the best as you prepare for the upcoming season.